Welcome to First United Lutheran Church. This is the message from Sunday. It's our prayer that this message touches your heart and helps to guide you in your life. Let's listen. Welcome to worship today at First United Lutheran. Uh, sun shining bright, and I see lots of smiles out there, so... Along with wonderful music, it really brightens up today. Uh, we're so lucky to have such talented people. <laughs> Looking through the bulletin, there, there's a lot going on. And it's wonderful to see such an active church congregation. Uh, we thank the Lord for that. Today there's Lots of special stuff going on. Uh, we're going to recognize our graduates today. And we also have a couple more First Communion members today, which will be coming up. We're graduates pretty quick, Communion at Communion time. We also have a mission trip fundraiser meal today. And there's another way you can contribute to the mission trip fundraising. There's, you'll see a board in the back with envelopes with numbers on it. You're supposed to put whatever the number is, dollar value inside the envelope, and there's cards in there. You can write well wishes to the youth and wish them well on their mission trip. Coming up this Wednesday, uh, clean up at Spruce Cemetery, 5.30. Bring tools for light yard work. And then next Sunday will also be ditch cleaning following worship. And two weeks from today, our summer worship schedule starts. So coffee and fellowship at 8.30 with church service at 9. So if you show up at 10, you're going to be late. <laughs> so are there any other announcements? You'll have to read through because I probably missed some. Oh, yeah. What you heard this morning is just a warm-up for this afternoon at 2 o'clock at the Four Seasons. Dean and Jackie and Frank, Bill, Gwen, I mean, well, Gwen will be there, too. <laughs> Barb, they'll be they'll be singing at the Four Seasons today at two o'clock. So, and Dean, did you have something going on tonight too, or not? I do, I do. So, as if uh, there's not enough else to go on and think about, uh, just a really quick blurb. Um, I have got some pretty cool stuff to share about. Um, bolstering our faith and belief and the reason that we've got uh, we can have some faith I guess particularly in the Old Testament uh, I got some stuff about the Red Sea crossing and some way cool stuff about the potential of a Noah's Ark it's been around for a while but I'm going to just go through some details on why there's some uh, substance to have some faith in some of this stuff uh, six o'clock tonight and uh, I'll just be in the basement very casual, like we uh, were doing the, uh, the Revelation uh, things last year. So everybody's welcome. I'll have some type of food there. I don't know yet what. <laughs> what time was it? Six. Six o'clock tonight. You know, when you offer up food, you'll get people to come, right? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, and... Everything that's going on here and stuff isn't possible. It doesn't happen by itself without participation. And we are so lucky to have so many people in our congregation step up to the plate and offer up their talents and whatever it is. Uh, if it wasn't for everybody here and thank the good Lord, none of this would happen. So we got to praise the Lord. <clears throat> Any other announcements? 
If not, would you bow your hearts in prayer? I should ask, are there any other prayer concerns? If not, bow your hearts in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the many gifts and opportunities that we have given us. If we apply ourselves and we use what is available to us, the sky is the limit. We pray today for the young people of all ages. We pray for our young people who will be or have taken their first communion. Monday, Thursday, we had Devin Hess, Isaiah Mathers, and Callie Hort. Today we welcome Brody Betcher and Audrey Hayden. May their lives be enriched and fulfilled through the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. We also pray for everyone who is graduating to the next step of their lives. We pray for Hannah Mooney, who is graduating from high school, Gabe Carlson, Zach Peebles, and Trevor Baumgartner, who are graduating from college. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to guide them and be present in their lives. We pray for the farmers all around the world, that they can get in the fields and get their crops planted. With the disasters all over the place, it wouldn't take much to create quite a shortage of grain. Lord, you are the great physician. There are people sick and hurting all around the world. Lord, you know everyone's needs. Please give them the comfort and healing they need to, rec to recover. We pray especially for Ray, Joanne, Renee, Vicki, Carol, Ada, Timothy, Linda, Amanda, Craig, Madeline, Mike, and everyone else we name in our hearts. We pray for everyone in the military, especially Tyler Wolf. With what is going on in this world, please keep everyone safe and console everyone who have lost loved ones. We pray for Mark and Diel, Daniela, Kaelfa, and Gary and Manny at Feed My Lambs, and for everyone else who is in your service around the world, trying to spread your word to people who have never heard it. We pray for our congregation today and that the words and music will be uplifting and fill their hearts with with uh, compassion and understanding about your love for us. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now I'll call on Paula. Good morning and welcome. It is a beautiful day to be able to celebrate um, all of our graduates. Um, so today is all about Hannah, but first I want to talk a little bit about our college graduates. Um, Zachary Fievel graduated last weekend um, at UMD with a Bachelor of Arts in Music Education. Um, Zach will be working in Duluth this summer and he is still looking forward to what he will be doing in the fall. But I tell you, whatever kids end up learning from him, they are going to be very lucky and very blessed to have him. Gabe Carlson graduated yesterday from UND with a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering. He has accepted a position with Polaris. He will start um, and serve some time in Roseville and then will be transferring to Wyoming, Minnesota. And then yesterday I had the honor of watching my son, Trevor Baumgartner, walk the stage to receive his PhD in biochemistry. Um, at NDSU. He will remain at NDSU teaching the summer, and then we are not sure what the future holds for him. But we wish them all the best, and we pray God's blessings on each of them as they move forward with our career. And as a parent, we all know that every time we get to watch our children walk across the stage, whether it is kindergarten graduation, or sixth grade, or high school, college, or any academic um, field that they choose and they walk across that stage, it means that they have started something and they have finished something and we are just always so proud. So we are proud of our college graduates, but today we want to honor, honor Hannah. Uh, besides being just an all-around sweet girl, um, she is an athlete. She participates in three sports this year. Um, we have all seen her on the volleyball court and the basketball court, but she is also on the golf course this year. And she is a member of the National Honor Society. She is always on uh, the honor roll and she's a very active member um, in our youth group. So I would like to invite Hannah forward and let her share what her plans are for next year. Okay. 
Um, I plan on attending the University of Concordia in Moorhead next year, and I'll be playing volleyball and studying nursing. So thank you. Great. Stay right up here. So congratulations to Hannah. We are so happy to celebrate this accomplishment and achievement with you. We are all so very proud of you. Everybody in this room is proud of you. It took a lot of hard work to get here, all the studying, the papers, the tests, the project, the speeches. Hannah took a speech class, and as youth group, we got to be a part of um, her speeches. We would record them, and we got to be her audience. And so she's a great speaker. She should be speaking instead of me. <laughs> um, and to, to Scott and Beth, you guys, um, you loved her and encouraged her through sports, through academics, and through her faith life. And I thank you for sharing her with me because you raised an incredible young woman. Um, graduation is an exciting time, but it can also be um, scary. It is a time of change. Um, Hannah will be leaving home, um, a new city, a new school, new teammates, new friends. And it can be hard for everyone, parents, friends. Um, I know Megan is going to miss her terribly. Um, but even me, I'm going to miss her terribly. But as we watch her move on, we will watch her grow and become an incredible woman. Um, Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So Hannah, God already has a plan for you, and it is a great one. He is ready to walk this path with you. He will always be aside, alongside you. Use his words and his guidance to grow in your spiritual life and understand how he is at work in your life. Remain faithful to his perfect love and the magnificent purpose he has for you. Three years ago, Hannah and I stood up here together as she was confirmed, and she shared a Bible verse that day, and I know she's always surprised that I remember this one, um, because it's also a favorite of mine. Look at I even had it printed for you uh, on a sticker, um, and it's from Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So I remind you, Hannah, the Lord will be with you wherever you go. Um, with each new challenge and each new step you take, always remember that you are never alone. You have the love of God to comfort and encourage you, guide you, and give you strength when you need it. Keep your heart open to him because he will never leave you. God's love will never fail you. Hannah, no matter where life takes you, we promise as a church family to love you, support you, and pray for you. I will always be just a phone call away if you ever need me, just like now. Um, I am so thankful for the time that we have spent together. Um, I am so glad that we have one more summer together. We have many more adventures together. Um, Hannah will be going on a mission trip with us, so we are taking her to New York, um, and she was with us in Savannah, Georgia. So I have learned so much about um, this girl. Um, she is not the silent girl that you think she is, and she is the connoisseur of ice cream. <laughs> and she is a lot of fun, and she's just a sweet girl. So I am just thankful that we have this last summer to share together. Um, she has been a huge influence in our youth group, and everybody has benefited from having her with us, so thank you so much for doing that. Um, and then our church has established a scholarship program, and it is for um, graduating seniors, so we were um, honored at the school on Thursday to present her with a $500 scholarship from the church. And this is awarded to high school seniors that continue to be involved in church and youth group um, throughout their years. So congratulations for that. And then... you hold your quilt. Um, <laughs> we have a quilt that Hannah was able to pick out last Sunday. So if you were here last Sunday, there were quilts adorning the entire church, and so it was a difficult process. Um, Megan and Scott and I were here while she picked this quilt out. Um, it, was, it was a process. And I'm going to tell you that um, this one she did take for a test drive to make sure that it was comfy and it was perfect, and it is the perfect quilt for Hannah. And so just, Hannah, remember that um, when you wrap yourself in this quilt, not only are you wrapped in God's love, but the love of all the women who went um, into making this quilt for you. So even though we are sad to see you go, we are excited to see what God has planned for you and to watch you to move forward in this life. Stay true to your faith and your beliefs. Follow what's in your heart and believe in yourself because you have the power to change the world. I love you, my sweet Hannah, and congratulations. And I'd like to invite Dean to pray for our graduates.
So let's all just bow our heads together and uh, just have a short special prayer for Hannah. Let her bow. Thank you for the years and the time that Hannah has enjoyed up to now. Thank you for all the love that's been poured into her life and the love that in return she has poured back. No one knows, of course, Lord, what the, what the next day brings or the next years. But we do know that without fail, you walk beside us when we invite you to be there. And so we just invite your Holy Spirit to bring wisdom and clarity into her life as she takes the next steps forward. Thank you for her. Thank you for her future. Thank you for her salvation and your guidance for her. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. <clears throat> Again, congratulations to all our graduates. And I did forget something. <laughs> Wouldn't be me. I have a thank you note here. Uh, Thank you so much for the beautiful and encouraging card and also for the beautiful lap quilt. Most of all, thank you for being the most supportive church family that we could ever hope for. Your prayers and well wishes are so much appreciated. Thanks again. Love, Doug and Linda. Anything else I forgot? If not... Uh, the psalm today is Psalm 89, verses 11 through 18. <clears throat> the heavens are yours, and yours also the earth. You founded the world and all that is in it. You created the north and the south. Tabor and Hermon sing for joy at your name. Your arm is endowed with power. Your hand is strong your right hand exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness. For you are the glory and strength, and by your favor you exalt our horn. Indeed, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. And now we have special music, and we'll also take the offering. Jesus found me, touched my eyes and made me see, broke since chains that long had bound me, gave me life and liberty. Oh, glorious love of Christ, my Lord divine. Son, what wonder he became the sinner's friend. Oh, glorious love of Christ, my Lord divine, that made him stoop to save a 
We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome God, nothing is hidden from you. You see us as we are. You know our desires, weaknesses, and failures. Send us your Holy Spirit today and cleanse the thoughts of our hearts so that we may come into your presence with freedom to worship and exalt your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Apostle John wrote the following instructions to those who follow Jesus. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment in silent reflection before God. Merciful God, we confess that we are addicted to sin and have no power to free ourselves. We have sinned against you by what we think, say, and do. We have left many good things undone. At times we fail to love you with our whole heart, and we fail to love our neighbors as you have commanded us. Heavenly Father, as your Son Jesus invited his followers to do, we seek forgiveness for every transgression. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, forgive us, heal us, and lead us, so that we can grow in our faith and relationship with you. In the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus told his followers, If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. As a fellow servant of Jesus, I say to you, your sins are forgiven. In Christ, you are given the power to become the sons and daughters of God. In Jesus' name, receive the comfort and power of the Holy Spirit. This is one of the things I miss the most about Roso. It's so good to be back in the fellowship of First United. The readings today, the first one is found in Job, chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Can even a strong man be more pure than his maker? If God places no trust in his servants, if he charges his angels with error, how much more those who live in houses of clay, whose foundation are in the dust, 
who are crushed more readily than a moth. Between dawn and dusk, they are broken to pieces. Unnoticed, they perish forever. Are not the cords of their tent pulled up so that they die without wisdom? The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Here ends the lesson. Thank you, Gwen. Um, so good to have you guys back. Thanks for uh, being part of our service this morning, and uh, and uh, look forward to you know anyone that can join us this afternoon. I think over at the at the senior at the Four Seasons, I think it's just more than welcome. It's going to be a a great morning over there. So let us stand together and let us uh, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then as we uh, open the gospel together, <clears throat> today we read from the chapter 7 of Matthew, um, verses 21 to 27. <clears throat> Oops. Not everyone, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, in your name drive out demons, in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, he's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and they beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. And thus ends the reading of the gospel for today. And as you are seated, uh, please greet someone and tell them you're glad they're here.
so my new, uh, okay, we got the... Did I get this turned on? Yep, we're working. So I put on my new suit coat in honor of Hannah. All the sweat she's poured out on the court, uh, various courts. There's a lot of people in this, uh, in this congregation this morning that understand that kind of sweat. And uh, I was fortunate to be one of them too. And so, uh, okay, just a little bit casual for you uh, this morning. So I'm going to share something a little bit short, sweet, and more to the point this morning. Um, falls to me, I guess, on this, this uh, kind of a unique day to talk about the two different foundations that we have an opportunity to build our life on. And Jesus, a couple thousand years ago, understood this very plainly, and nothing has changed. In the world today, there are still foundations of sand available for people to build lives on, and there's a foundation of unmoving rock that is available for us as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that very briefly, but <clears throat> my main punch this morning, I guess, is to share the, uh, a little portion of a life story of somebody that's a living example <clears throat> of foundations on one and foundations on the other. Um, through the years, I guess, of touring and traveling, uh, a lot of heartaches and a lot of rewards. And I guess last summer, I was just blessed. I was at, of all things, I was at a funeral. And a lady came up to me and said, I want you to know that the impact that you and your band had on my life has been for my whole life. 45 years. She said, not only me, but there's a, <clears throat> you know, several of my friends that actually went into missions because of the work that you guys were doing. And I thought, wow. I just thought it was, you know, probably didn't have that much effect on anybody. We weren't that super good, you know. But the point was work that is dedicated to God. And the words that we share of Christ, that promise is true. They don't return empty. They don't return void. Um, the gospel is something that changes people's lives. I, I remember making a note a few years ago. Maybe I read it. Maybe I invented it. I don't know. But it's three points. God made man. Man destroyed man, and only God can repair man. And that's what we're going to take a quick look at this morning, <clears throat> is, uh, is some of those great lessons that come out of this. Now, many of us have observed through the years uh, the different storms that come along. Now, on Lake of the Woods, we're kind of blessed. The islands are made out of rock. But... On the East Coast, and you get down into Florida, there's no such thing really as rock. And so they do their best, and they put these things up on pedestals and on stilts and all kinds of different things to try to get things away, to, to get the, the house away from the surf. But the storms of life get pretty violent sometimes, don't they? We do our best, I think, to build us, to build ourselves up on the solid rock and find a good place to, to build our lives. But very often, the storm is just too big. Can't stand it. And so the poor folks that own this house, they used to be, you know, up above all of these things. I don't know. I can't even recognize most of the things that are there. They're just destroyed by the surf, and the house is moments away from just becoming a soggy wreck, too. And uh, so we look at this and think, how do I compare that with my life? Well, I'm going to step back, and we're going to take a, a little walk through life with one of my very, very favorite, the, the King of Cool. He, that was his name. Um, 
A lot of you remember this movie, The Great Escape. Who can possibly forget? Who can possibly compete with somebody that was so cool as Steve McQueen doing a motorcycle jump over the barbed wire with the Nazi army in hot pursuit, trying to get away from him? This was probably one of the most iconic moments in his life, apart from the fact that he was just a fun guy to watch on the stage. Steve McQueen was the king of cool. I don't know. I see all these stars and so forth today, the rock stars that, that so be. I don't, know. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys like Britney Spears. There is no comparison. I'm sorry. There, there's just no comparison to Steve McQueen for being just flat out cool. I mean, who else can drive a car at 80 miles an hour through the midair of uh, San Francisco doing jumps, looking backward from where he came and not where he's going. Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about his foundations of his life. He didn't start out like that. This is a brutal story, it really is. Um, Steve's grandparents were very straight and narrow Catholic people, very rigid in their uh, beliefs, and they wanted to raise their daughter, who was now Steve's mother, in the same tradition. Problem is, you know, a lot of times kids that are raised, and, and we, tr we do our best, of course, to keep them on the straight and narrow, there's no guarantee. There is no guarantee where that ship is going to go. We, we don't know. And that was the case with Steve's mom. The more her parents tried to keep her on the straight and narrow, the more rebellious she got. So this was way back in the 20s, the roaring 20s. Steve's mom took off. And so um, they're in Indianapolis, Ohio, or Indianapolis, Indiana, in, a, in Beach Grove, I guess. It was a small portion of that town, kind of in the middle there. She took off. Late 20s were a time of just all kinds of what they called the speakeasies. She met a guy by the name of William McQueen. They had some kind of a dalliance. She was not ready at all to be a mother. And so Steve came along, and it was a shipwreck from the very beginning. His dad just took off, nowhere to be seen really ever again. Through his life, there were some moments when they were only a few miles apart, but his, his dad could not even be bothered to spend any time with Steve or to look him up or to follow him. So he became one of these juvenile delinquents, if you will. He became quite a handful. <clears throat> and uh, as he was growing up, I got a lot of this information from his biography from Pastor Greg Laurie from a church in California. Greg, his life almost paralleled that of Steve McQueen. Greg writes this about his childhood. He said, I remember one Christmas night when I was just a tyke. I was sitting on the floor in my pajamas. The lights on the artificial tree were blinking on and off. The tinsel shimmered when the breeze blew through the open window. And I looked over at my mother, drunk, passed out on the sofa. I can still see it, he says. That was the reality that I knew. But even as young as I was, I remember consciously thinking, this is not how it's supposed to be. And so we've got a life already because of rebellion and sin. It's a terrible shipwreck. And the second generation is about to reap the benefit of that. Steve grew up then. He had troubles with school. So to begin with, Steve was dyslexic. So he had a big strike against him already. Secondly, 
they lived the life of nomads all over the place. You know, his mom was here for a little bit, here for a little bit, here for a little bit. So his attendance at school was just very sporadic at the very best. And even when he was there, his very favorite thing, he was just a lot like Huck Finn. Remember the stories of Huck Finn? He, his number one class in school was to play hooky. Out of here. So he got going with gangs out in California, and they, uh, and they would steal hubcaps and, you know, go and find booze and whatever. Just typical, typical trouble that kids got into. So his mom kind of gave up on that sent him back to Beach Grove to live with his uncle, who lived on a farm, who had chores and schedules. And by this time, Steve, nothing to do with anything that boring, he much preferred uh, getting out with his gang again, and they went on a BB gun rampage, shooting out windows, bing, 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 bing. So his uncle was real impressed with this sent him off to an all-boys boarding school. Carnival came through town. <laughs> Steve McQueen skipped out of school, jumped on the bus with, I suppose, I don't know, could have been William D. Stanley shows, we remember those, but uh, he took off and lived with the Carnival for a while until that got worn out and old, and finally then he wound up in reform school. So things are not looking all that great for Steve by this point. This is what his life has started to look like too, just as the benefit of everything that was coming his way. So finally, he got through that. He wound up uh, enlisting with the Marine Corps, went through the Marine Corps, went to Manhattan, and was going with a lady there, and she talked him into going to try out for some kind of a play. I don't know if it was off-Broadway or something. 3,000 people trying out for 75 positions. It turned out uh, the rest was history. Steve became an actor, went up to Hollywood, and the rest was history. The camera absolutely loved Steve. Um, he became by far the greatest icon, I guess, to me, that, that Hollywood had ever produced. Um, he was making upwards of you know, nearly 80 to 90 million dollars back in the, in the 50s and 60s and 70s for some of his big movies. You think this is success, right? This has got to be where it's at. Well, of, un, of all the unlikely heroes, I'm going to read this quote from Jim Carrey. He says this, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything that they ever dreamed of. Are you ready for this? So that they can see that it's not the answer. These are pretty big names talking about all the glamour, all the fortune, all the influence that they've got about people. Uh, got with people saying, this is nothing. Things started to go south for Steve McQueen. He had, I guess, one of his earliest jobs when he was 16 years old, just to kind of give you an idea of what his interests were. He took on a job as a towel boy in a local brothel. So that was the kind of job that he took on. It wasn't working at the Dairy Queen or anything like that. And, and his life kind of followed that. His final wife, third, said, he always married brunettes, but, he, but she said there was a whole lot of blondes in between that. Steve, like so many people, sought for release in carnality physical, immediate uh, gratification, all that kind of thing. But he found, just like Jim Carrey, the more that you've got, the emptier it gets, the emptier and emptier and emptier. And finally, after The Towering Inferno, this was one of his last big movies that he was in, he was out for a walk one day, and he went into a film wardrobe company, and who was there but Burt Reynolds. So Steve walked up 
to Bert, who's trying on clothes and different things, and he says, Bert, it's all yours, kid. Well, this was kind of something out of the blue. Bert wasn't sure what he was talking about. And so he asked him, you know, Steve, what do you mean by that? He said, uh, number one, kid, it's yours. I'm stepping down. Okay, so now we enter the whole question of can you shift foundations? His life, obviously, was like that crashing building. Empty, falling apart. Everything that he'd ever tried was nothing there. So he wound up taking flying lessons, just looking for something. And it turned out that his pilot teacher happened to be a very, very strong and devout Christian. Didn't push it on him. Just living his life, sh uh, telling Steve, you know, and, and then conversations over whatever, coffee, and, you know, whatever, after the lessons, he started talking about, well, Steve started asking him questions. You always look so fulfilled, so happy. What's the deal with this? So Steve before he found out he had cancer, started to go to this tiny little church, sitting in the balcony, didn't want recognition, didn't want people knowing who he was. And the audience knew who, I mean the congregation knew who he was, but they were real cool about it and just, you know, gave him a space and were very, very friendly. And so at the very, very close of his life, Steve McQueen, who had been at the absolute top of the ladder of success that we, many of us, would define as the pinnacle. Finding it completely empty, finally heard the gospel and the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to me, all you who are weary and you're heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am humble and you will find rest for your soul. And so it was finally at the very end of that, at the age of 50, Steve found out that he had mesothelioma and it came on gangbusters. It, it hit him very hard and there was nothing that they really could do about it. And he wound up in Mexico taking some very high-risk experimental treatments, and a few days later, uh, he passed. So my prayer is this morning we can, uh, number one, we can take some value from that lesson. Number one, not to pursue blindly all of these vain things that the world promises as the solution to our emptiness. There is no solution out there in what the world has got to offer. There's one solution, there's one way, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, his forgiveness, his redemption, his cleanness that he instills into us. Clean before my Lord I stand. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. And so... Yes, Anna, of course, I'm sharing some of these stories for you just as, uh, as your benefit. Uh, just one reference point. Just one reference point. That's all it is. But it's also a good, solid reference point for the rest of us, just to remind us there is a true compass. There is a true north. And there is only one way home. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Even though we build our whole lives on sand, Lord, there is an opportunity for us to plant our feet on the rock and that instantly that rock gives us support and foundation. And upon that rock, Lord, you establish us and you establish your light to shine through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, that's the closing slide.
There is a house like that. And there is a rock like that. And this is what God wants to build of each of us. Amen. I'm just... It was such a great story. I wish we'd have had some more time to talk about some of the other things that had happened to Steve, because I think a lot of us probably thought he was pretty cool. Anyway, uh, I'd like to call Paula forward. Uh, we're going to share First Communion with, um, with our final two students this morning, Brody and Audrey, and so I'll just turn it over to Paula for a minute. All right. Um, this is a great day. Um, not only do we get to celebrate our um, senior and our graduates, we are celebrating our fifth graders. And so all of our fifth graders went through a class and learned about communion. And um, some of those kids on Monday, Thursday were able to receive their first communion. Um, but we have two with us today that are going to receive their first communion. And at youth group on Wednesday, um, when we were here, we were actually able to make um, unleavened bread. So the bread that you will be receiving today for communion was made by our 4th through 6th grade youth group class. So I would like to call forward uh, Brody Betcher and Audrey Hayden. Before we share communion, I guess let's uh, have a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you also for the specialness of these two lives, each of them individually, Lord. How much you mean, to, or how much they mean to you, how much your love uh, has reached out to them. Lord, pray this be a special day for them uh, as they have their first communion and share in the. Uh, the sacrifice that was given to us by you. Um, we pray for their families, that uh, they would continue to, to nurture and uh, bring them forward in training as they continue to grow in uh, strength and wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, we will call forward um, both Brody and Audrey's families. And so, yes, just a word of uh, quick logistics. Um, what we'll do is the same thing that we did uh, with our earlier First Communion, we'll share communion, first of all, uh, Brody and Aubrey, Audrey, and then we will share with the family, and then following that, we will invite the rest of the congregation forward. So, the words of institution. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord that which also I shared with you, and that is the night that Jesus was betrayed during the night of the Last Supper. He took bread. And when he had broken it, he gave thanks, and he said to the disciples, This is my body, which is broken for you, and this do as often as you uh, share it in remembrance of me. And so I share with you the body of Christ. Amen. And in the same manner also, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks with that, he also raised it to heaven and said, This is my blood, which I have shed in, or in, uh, in forgiveness, for the forgiveness of your sins. And this do also, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
And so now we'd uh, invite, I guess, our, uh, our families to make, uh, take a seat. And we'd like to invite the servers to come forward, the ushers, as we serve the rest of our congregation.
Now may the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer, and following that we'll sing our closing hymn. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so, uh, if you wish to sing from the hymn book, it's... Uh, Number 69, Standing on the Promises of God. of Christ my King through eternal ages let his praises ring glory in the highest I will shout and sing standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of Christ my Savior standing standing I'm standing of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing. Standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fail, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we should sing our table grace because I think we're... Uh... Okay. All right. So uh, let's sing, be present at our table, Lord, be strengthened for thy service be. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adore. These mercies bless and grant that we may streams in your life with thee. Amen. Forgot my own instructions. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message from First United Lutheran Church.